Hey everyone, in today's video, we are talking all about our controlled vowels. Now, I have done a ton of phonics videos in the past. I have ones for how to teach words with digraphs, how to teach words with blends, all about that silent E on the end. So I'm adding this to a whole phonics playlist, and I'm excited to teach you some of my favorite tips and tricks for teaching this phonics skill. Now, just like in my other phonics videos, I plan to share a little bit about what our controlled vowels are, and then I'm going to kind of walk you through the steps of some example activities I would actually use in my classroom when teaching this skill to my students. So if you are ready to learn about our controlled vowels, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. Okay, when teaching our controlled vowels, it's important that we as the teacher know what these are. And basically an R controlled vowel, sometimes people call them bossy R vowels. And that is because the R is going to come right after the vowel. Here's an example in AR. When you see the graphemes AR together, they actually make one sound, R. You don't actually hear two different sounds and that A doesn't make that short vowel sound, A, or the long vowel sound, and you don't hear the R separately. You kind of hear them together, R. Another one is OR. Here, instead of A ah or O oh, and the R sound separately, we actually have OR. And then I usually teach IR, ER, and UR all together because these are the graphemes that most typically make the sound ER or ER. Now those aren't the only R controlled vowels, but as for when I typically teach these, I teach those five to my first grade students towards the kind of middle-ish end of the year, so maybe March and on. Um, and I do teach them separately. I teach AR and OR, and then I will teach those other three together. Remember, just like with any phonics skill, it takes a long, time for students to master these. I talked about this in my vowel teams video, but because there are so many vowel team patterns and there are actually a lot of R controlled vowel patterns, it takes students a long time to master this. So as of right now, at the end of first grade or sometime in second grade, you're kind of just teaching students how to decode these words, how to encode most of these words, and I mostly stick with those five R controlled vowels first. Now in second grade, I will teach them some other ones like A-I-R, or some of the ones with that silent E on the end, like A-R-E, and O-R-E, U-R-E, etc. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to start with A-R, that's typically the one I would start with, and then very very quickly I would have students go into OR and start comparing the two. Okay, now for how I would teach this. All right, step one when teaching a new phonics skill is I like to start with the sound. As I said, the AR, ER, and UR, they all make one sound and it's going to be a relatively new sound to your students. So I like to start there by having them listen to words with these sounds and recognize that they've heard these before. So I like to do this many different ways. You can either hold up some flashcards and have students say the different words, recognize kind of what they might notice is similar about the sounds. But to do this easily, I like to use my what's the rule slides. And here is an example of that. Now I've shared these slides in the past before, but essentially there's a thumbs up side and a thumbs down side. And students have to determine what is the same about all the sounds in the thumbs up side, and whatever is the same cannot be included on the thumbs down side. So here when we look at the thumbs up side, we have yarn, star, jar, shark, car, barn, card. What sounds are in all of those words that aren't over on the other side? And as you can see, I like to purposely put different types of sounds over on this other side. So in the thumbs down side, I have a lot of just regular short A and long A sounds. And I do this on purpose for when we kind of explain this slide a little bit more later on. So either with or without your help, depending on how much practice they've had with slides like these, students would determine that all of the words, all of the images rather, on the what's the rule slide on the thumbs up side have the R sound. Once that has been confirmed and determined, we're gonna go to step two, which is to take each of those words on that thumbs up side and go ahead and tap out the sounds. Let's hear how many sounds are in each word. So I would guide students in doing this by pointing at the star and I would say star, you guys say star. Let's tap it out, s, t, r three phonemes. All right, let's move on to the next one. Yarn, you guys say it. Yarn, y, r, n. Three sounds again. What about jar? You guys say it. Jar, j, r, 
two sounds. By having students tap out the sounds in these words, they're starting to recognize that that R is one sound when we tap it out. J R. J R. Those are the two phonemes in that word. This is important because as we add graphemes into the mix in our next step, we want them to recognize that the two letters are going to make one sound, which is going to lead us right into step three, which is to introduce the graphemes. Now, this is where we will explicitly teach about the R controlled vowel sound, and I like to do that by following those first steps first. That only takes, you know, about five, six minutes maximum for them to guess the rule, tap out some of the sounds, and now let's take those images one step further and let's write out the words. So now I'll tell my students, okay, we just tapped out those sounds. Now let's practice writing them. Star, s, t, r. It's going to be three phonemes. So I might on the board write three different lines just to represent it. And then I'll ask for some help. We have s, s, t, t, R. And this is where I will just tell students, I'm going to explain that the way R is spelled when we hear it, it's typically spelled A-R. Then I'll go ahead and do this two or three more times with some other words. J-R, the J and the A-R. Shark, sh-r-k. Three sounds, we know our digraph S-H, we have A-R and we have k. K on the end. Once we have gone ahead and written down all of those AR words, I like to ask my students what they notice. Now typically they'll say, well, they all have AR, of course. But then I like to ask them to think one step further. They have that A sound and we have learned at this point in the year that A usually makes A and sometimes it makes A. But what is different about this one? And that's when they'll tell you they all have that R on the end. And then you can go ahead and explain that in the English language, when we have an R after the vowel, we call it an R controlled vowel because the R is actually gonna change that sound of the vowel. You're gonna say that that bossy R is not only saying that you're not gonna make two sounds anymore, you're gonna make one, but also that A isn't going to make A anymore. It's gonna make R. And just like I do with digraphs, I like to make a point of showing how jar isn't J-A-R, 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 that's hard to say. Instead we say jar, star is not st-A-R, st-A-R. Again, hard to say, not a word, star. All right, so step one was to start with the sound. You can do something like, what's the rule? I love those slides. Also, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the what's the rule slides, um, they're included in the SJT Literacy Club and they're also on TPT. The R controlled slides, I just added those. So if you already own it, go back and re-download. It will have the R controlled slides in there. Step two was to have students tap out those sounds to really recognize that that R is going to be one phoneme. And step three is to introduce the graphemes, explicitly teach what an R-controlled vowel is. And in particular, the one that you are focusing on, which in this case is AR. With step four, I really like to move on to decoding. This is where students are going to try to read words both in isolation and in sentences that have that R-controlled sound in it, specifically AR in this case. Now, before students go off and do something like this independently, I would definitely write a few words on the board, have them practice blending the sounds all together, and then blending the words quickly. So write a bunch of AR words up there. Again, point to each sound, have students say each sound and blend. You can do that with like four to five words and then have students practice this independently. Now in all my phonics videos, I share many different activities for decoding. Some of my absolute favorites are going to be this one page decodable. This is for my intervention unit and I absolutely love these for independent work and small group work for students that might need extra help with AR or any phonics skill rather. In case you are not familiar with these, these are all one page decodables. So up at the top, I have some sounds that I want students to work on. And just so you guys know, this unit does build upon each other. So each skill builds upon one another. So if we are at AR, students would have already learned all these other sounds before they've been added into these decodable sentences. So students up here will go over these sounds, R, CH, A, and E and these will all be in the sentences that they're going to read. Then they will focus on that AR pattern with words in isolation. So mark, dark, arm, star, farm, and park. And then they have three decodable sentences to go ahead and read. After they read all three sentences, there are two word lines down at the bottom where they're going to go ahead and encode some words that the teacher says, specifically with AR in them. And then for a little comprehension check, they can choose one of those sentences and draw an illustration. 
I absolutely love those sheets. They are probably my favorite thing I've come out with in a few years, which says quite a bit because I come out with a lot of units, but I love how purposeful and easy they are to use. Now, as another example, I do have these phonics-based comprehension pages, and these are very basic passages that are mostly decodable. So unlike the resource that I just mentioned, I didn't work through each and every one of these um, to make sure that they have the skills previously taught because they're kind of separated, if that makes any sense. But likely you will have taught most of the skills in here before getting to our controlled vowels. So anyway, here is Mark and Mars. So students will go ahead and read this passage. I will have them read it three times. They color in the star on the bottom. And then they also go ahead and highlight all the AR words that they find in the passage. And then there are two very basic comprehension questions for them to go through. And then there are two very basic comprehension questions for them to go back in the text and answer in those boxes. And then lastly, they can draw a picture of what's happening in the story. Now for those beginning comprehension passages, I also have them available in digital format on Seesaw and in Google. So this is what it looks like. Again, it's the same exact passage and students will read it three times and drag over the stars. They will, instead of writing, they will type in the answers to the questions. And then for the comprehension part, they'll have to look at two images and drag over the one that matches the story. So kind of just two different ways to practice that skill. And I like the digital version because it's a great center that you can put if your students use iPads or anything in the classroom. So that's step four in a nutshell, decode, decode, decode. Make sure you're doing words in isolation as well as in sentences or paragraphs. All right, and step number five when it comes to teaching our controlled vowels is that I want my students to practice actually writing and spelling and encoding all means the same thing basically. I want them to practice writing those words. So, so far students have practiced the sound. They've kind of differentiated that sound from other sounds. They have learned the grapheme connection to that sound, what letters make R. They have practiced decoding words in sentences and in isolation. So now I want them to practice writing. Now whole group, you can start this off by having students practice some phoneme grapheme mapping where they are essentially listening to a word with R controlled vowels shark. They will say it, shark. They will tap out the sounds, sh, r, k, just like they did at, you know, step two. That will help them recognize that they need three sound boxes or Elkonin boxes, and they will go ahead and then write each grapheme in each phoneme box. So sh is going to be sh, r is going to be ar, and k is going to be k. I would practice this a few times with your students whole group before they go into an independent activity and you know make it fun make it multi-sensory you can use play-doh so before they actually write down the graphemes you can have them uh, tap out each one into little play-doh balls so if there's three sounds they can tap sh r k you can have them move up little counters, whatever you wanna do, but make it fun. And then I like to move it into a little bit more of an independent activity. Specifically, I like to use this activity right here called spin, say, and spell. And as you can see here, students will go ahead and spin the spinner at the bottom. And there, there are four images that all have A, R in them. Students will go ahead and spin it. Let's pretend they landed on barn here. They will say it aloud, barn, and then they will spell the word. B-A-R-N. They go ahead and keep spinning, saying, and spelling until they have completed their entire sheet. Now that fun phonics activity I do have on TPT. It looks like this right here. And they're also included in the Literacy Club. But just like my What's the Rule slides, I just added some of the R-controlled activities in there. So be sure to re-download it if you already own it to grab the R-controlled ones. Now as you could see, that one had just AR on there. I do have ones for only OR, only IR, only UR, and only ER. And then I have some mixed ones for review. All right, now last but not least, it's important to remember that students aren't going to master, you know, reading and writing all of these sounds in a week or two, right? It's going to take them a long time, so you want to keep exposing them through literacy centers, through small group work, whole group work, to all the different sounds, and just some more fun skills for decoding and encoding these words. Also, once I introduce other ones, like OR is what I would teach next, in just a few days, I like to have them compare the R and OR sounds. And as you continue to teach your students about more of the R-controlled vowels, they can do activities where kind of all of them are combined. Now, some of my favorite ways to review our controlled vowels include this word sort right here. Here I have a picture and word sort where students have to determine between 
the R and or sound. And I love these two because at the top of each box here, students will actually try to write the word as well. So after they've sorted it, they can practice encoding the word. I of course also have my print, play, and learn phonics games. Here is an example from the R controlled version. Now for each different phonics skill, I have six different games. So here is just one of them from the R controlled one. It's called Roll, Read, and Draw. And this is a two player game where students will go ahead and roll some dice. They will read the word so they have to decode it and then to show that they know what it means They will simply draw a picture of it in the box There's five other fun art controlled vowel games there too But I also have one last freebie that I want to share This is an older freebie that I downloaded called R controlled vowel fun And there's some phonics activities in here like read and draw a lot of these are going to be independent activities So again students will have to decode and draw a picture here is fill it in they will have to determine which R controlled vowel vowel goes in each space to make the word. There are two sentence scrambles for students to go ahead and mix up. They have to cut out the words, unscramble the sentence, and write it in. There's a word hunt for students to look around the classroom and look in some books and record any R-controlled vowels that they find. There's also a little decodable passage about Timmy the bird who wanted to surf and there's a fun cover up game at the end. So those are just some of the fun things I like to put either at small group where I can do it guided with my students or at independent phonics centers for students to work through and become masters at reading and writing words with R controlled vowels. So there you have some of the fun ways I would teach R controlled vowels to my own first and second grade students. I would love to know from you, are there any other fun activities or ideas that you like to use when teaching this tricky phonics skill to your kids? Let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.